Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more King's Quest VI. And we've just done a whole bunch of shit. And uh, we're right. gonna go visit the 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 pawn shop. Yeah, the shop. Everybody uh, knows that it's extra fancy if you put uh, an extra P and E at the end of shop. Uh, it just came to my mind a joke I'm not sure I could make. Uh, well, either way, uh, we got a big old pearl, was... so we can get our big old ring back. <laughs> but anyway, it was a joke. I was thinking, like, it is not sexual assault, you're excellent, it was rapey. <laughs> Glad you didn't sell it. Um, I'm a bit attached think of it in the way that were uh, that uh, you're uh, that old ladies, uh, old uh, middle aged women write in their sexual novels, <laughs> in their female gooning novels. It wasn't assault, a good sir, it was rapier. I anyway. recall here, like, a, a, watching recently a video called The Female Gooning Epidemic. And the guy was talking, like, uh, some of the... <laughs> he was talking about some of the books that are discussed in among uh, book circles on the internet. Uh, and, uh, you mean a lot Fifty of... Shades of Grey and basically nothing else? <laughs> Except basically, unless it's Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah like, be books like that, like, a. Uh, that are very much uh, preferred by the female the female audience, and a lot, a, a lot of them are basically porn. Well, yeah, I mean, and the, like the idea is that there's nothing wrong with liking porn. It's just that you know, don't fucking hide the fact of what it is. Like, um, I do remember uh, working with a, a coworker one time who said, oh yeah, I like Fifty Shades of Grey, and so out of curiosity, I just asked, you know, oh, so what? Uh, what is it about? Like, uh, why do you like it? And he's like, oh, it's a really well-written story about how uh, the guy uh, and this girl fall in love with each other, and like, going on like that, and it's like, really interesting to get into the man's psyche, and I'm just thinking the whole time, like, no, like, you have not read much, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> no, woman, you're lying to me. Your reason, your reasons are much more nether. I mean, to be fair, she was a co-worker, so I think if she just mentioned that uh, I like reading it while fisting myself, it would have been a bit uh, of a social faux pas. I was thinking, like, uh, like just schlicking. I, I, I appreciate that you went to to the extra extra mile of imagining her fisting herself, like. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of those books, like they're just. They, I, I recall once a, uh, a while I used to work in a well, to, well. To be fair, I still do. I, I used to work on a, at a place uh, like a healthcare facility, mm -hmm. and like ninety percent of the people there were women. And they all and, talked about fisting themselves while working. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make him. Don't make me question our friendship. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll give you every chance to question it. Yeah, the fact that you that the fact that you are from that unholy country just is good enough reason to question it. But anyway, I remember at one point, like I, a, 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 lot, a lot of them. Someone brought uh, a volume of the. I think there was the first book of Sh Fifty Shades of Grey. Sing, sing, and sweet. You bring another that book pa got passed around like yeah, a lot. I think sing, sing. I saw like some, some at least three what different women you? Uh, in my session just reading it. And I recall at some point I was my heart with links so uh, one other woman just had the book by her side and I just grabbed the book mm -hmm. and I opened oh, on the page sorry. that it was bookmarked I was hoping and I began you. reading in, uh, in, in, out loud. <laughs> And she just hurried to take the thing off my head. <laughs> because it was that embarrassing of a thing to be reading out loud. Like, to, about, to, to make people know that that was what she was reading out loud.
Well, isn't most of the story just them getting into BDSM uh, scenes? Basically. I think. It's a note. Even then, like, uh, according to uh, people who actually know a, a thing or two about BDSM, it's like, no, this is a, like a very normie perspective on it. Like, uh, it's not accurate at all. I am not without resources, and I will prevail if I can only find some. I lost track of what I was going to say. <laughs> you were reminiscing about uh, how turned on you got from reading that passage. <laughs> In your no, I'm not a woman. <laughs> I know that my voice is an up to Kel's baritone, but I think it should be still be obvious that I do not hold a vagina in between my legs. Yet. There's always a chance that it could happen. Yes, I got hit by a truck. And I'm a, I'm a re reincarnated as a, as a, as a woman in a medieval, in, in a medieval fantasy setting. Oh, I was thinking of the, uh, the one where the guy becomes a, uh, a, a lolly war general. I forget what it's called. But, uh, you know which one I'm talking uh, about, right? It's like, a, it's a really famous, uh, isekai. Yeah, it's, uh, sa the saga of Tanya the Evil. Yeah, that's the one. That show was just Would you mind if I that it in? it was so hard to take of that show seriously because true, the guy was essentially like a thirty-year-old psychopath. Looks closely at the and I, I don't think that's much of an exaggeration. The guy was in in the real world the pretty much a, a sociopath. Cool he gets that. killed and gets and basically God himself. Thank you. To uh, talks to him as he is falling to his death, and he says, "I'm gonna send you to a world where world where magic exists. If you manage to survive your th that life, I will not take you out of the circle of reincarnation and basically send you to be a damned soul to eternity." Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> So like the guy is just this, this thirty-year-old sociopath in the body of a like nine-year-old. Yeah. Uh. As much as I like Japan, they can come up with some weird stuff. <laughs> Ooh, and uh, speaking of weird, we're in the Island of Wonder, and we have ourselves a teacup over here. But first, we gotta play this flute. Let's call on the walrus and the carpenter. How about that? Um. The Walrus and the Carpenter, what's that from? It's a story that Tweedledee and Tweedledum tell to Alice okay. while, uh, while they are in the... While yeah. they are entertaining her, I think. Yeah, I've never actually read uh, the book uh, Alice in Wonderland or Through the Looking Glass. Um, even then, I haven't even seen the uh, the cartoon Alexander Disney one. I saw the, the, flower, um, the uh, Tim Burton uh, sequel, which music and oblivious to everything around them. I don't God, know. I, I I know uh, why people say it's bad, but I don't know. It was like okay, I guess. While the wallflowers dance, Alexander snaps. Anyway, we got ourselves a hole in the wall. Huzzah! And time for the teacup. This teacup is extremely important. There is a mouse inside it. Let's use it to scare Alexander the queen. <laughs> one of the baby's tears a bottle of milk. The other baby's tears seem to But first of all, uh before we do what we need to do with the teacup, we need to make these babies cry because one of the ingredients we need is water or salt water not from the ocean. Oh my lord. <laughs> All right, now uh, you use the teacup to get some uh, swamp ooze. What do you think you're doing? You startled me. I was just getting <laughs> some swamp ooze. <laughs> well, well hello, sir. There. That's not swamp ooze. That's swamp sludge. Like I said, I like this island. It's great. Right, you know. 
Mm-hmm. But he could be a little... Where else you gotta, you gotta watch Twig at Eddie Murphy? Stick in the mud. <laughs> Nobody asked you! Really? You get the uh, Eddie Murphy impression from him? I just... I don't even know what he was supposed to be an impression of, but... I don't know, some, something about him reminds me, reminds me of Eddie Murphy. Look, just because they're both brown. <laughs> uh... Who are you? I'm bump on a log. All right, so uh, let's figure out this puzzle. We've had this thing about each other ever since our childhood. Mom always Because we need to get the uh, the swamp the swamp ooze that's over by stick in the mud over there, but he's not going to share any. He's a bit lazy, you see. He's got the approach him with fire in your hand. But do you think he'd move a finger? No, 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 no. Hardly. This isn't a job entirely based on us to solve. We need to get Bump on a log involved. And that on yours truly. Oh, like you've moved at all in the last century. Like you're Mr. Physical Activity. Just because I can't right. reach anything, oh. he thinks he can throw gushy swamp matter at me and just say whatever he likes. If only I could turn the tables on that heck. Well, he's, he's the one with arms. So. Mm -hmm. but as you can see, I'm Although it's going to scare you how we uh, solve this puzzle. Must be content with my lot. Uh, does it involve violence? You couldn't hit that broad side of a barn. Uh, yes, in fact there is a warfare that happens. Oh. So for once, am I going to be satisfied for once with the resolution of the puzzle? <laughs> Indeed. Because we have to get this uh, rotten I tomato this to bump in a log, the next time and there's his arm. On you. Aha! Finally, old bump on the logs, not so defenseless, is he? Hey, hey! What are you doing there? Watch the pump, would ya? Now, Bumpy, remember all I've given you. The only thing you've ever given me is mud. Take this. No! Not into the swamp! Gonna hit, gonna hit an asshole with another asshole? Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay. I give up. Well. Jeez, sorry. See, I told you it was a war that was I gonna happen. It's not very pleasant having things thrown at you. I'm sorry. You mean it? Really? Brother. Brother. Oh, goodness. Stick in the mud and bump on a log. Uh, did your cat uh, hop up on you again? Immediately doze off into nap. No, I'm just flabbergasted by how lame this is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the goodness. important details that we have access to our swamp ooze. The teacup with the swamp ooze. Alrighty, so we have uh, a third of the ingredients needed for two spells. Well, technically we have uh, more ingredients, but uh, the more important ingredients that we need, uh, we still have to find. Let's see. Um, what was... What were we... Uh, I'm trying to remember what, what the... What we're going to be doing right now. Um, oh yeah, pawn shop. Taxes? No, not quite. Uh, the, we need to exchange the flute for the uh, Would you mind uh, tinder box. Of course, Prince Alex. Please choose something in exchange for the. Are we going to set fire to something? Looks close Please. To the items on the no, no. Selection. We're very good people in this game. We can't set fire to things willy nilly. But you are a prince. Very At some prince point, Alex. you gotta learn Enjoy to exercise authority, and, and sometimes in that involves taking taking drastic measures to people who don't understand anything other than. Than, than aggression, <laughs> you know. Hello. It's turn the king's quest starts learn uh, starts no. teaching some kingly questions. Look, uh, the only uh, game where uh, a king's quest game where it gets uh, unnecessarily violent is King's Quest Eight, and there's a reason why that one's considered to be the worst one in this series. <laughs> but it was because it wasn't 3D. 
Um, it's in 3D, but also it's technically like a shooter as well. <laughs> Alexander has a strange pulling sensation. It doesn't sound right. It, it, there you go. You figured out the problem with uh, King's Quest Eight. <laughs> I mean, couldn't they make it work? They make, like, they kind of make the RPG adventure thing work with post. Quest for Glory, didn't they? Uh, kind of. But no, it was more along the lines of they added a 3D shooter element to the King uh, King's Quest uh, formula. So you still solve puzzles like it's a King's Quest game, but... Uh, you're constantly running into enemies that you uh, machine gun fire uh, uh, crossbows at. <laughs> That's quite a way to welcome a guest, if indeed. It, it's very welcome. fucking weird. Not to mention that it's a glitchy piece of shit as well. Oh no, Alexander loses his balance. Oh, and uh, here's a funny little whoa, whoa, Easter egg whoa. for you. Hey. And we just have to do that a couple more times. Oh no. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, the, whoa, they always. Ow. Hey. <laughs> well, the sur the oh, surprise no. should be gone Alex. by now, mate. Whoa. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. What? Quit making me. What fall. is going on? <laughs> uh, oh. Good break breaking the fourth wall. But, uh, this is the uh, mountain of copyright protection. This is where you have to open up your manual and figure out what the hell, uh, how to solve these puzzles. Because, uh, the first one was rather simple. You could pretty much brute force your way through. But, from here on out, if you get the puzzle wrong, you die. And there is no way to figure out what the puzzle is because there is no description as to what you're supposed to be doing. Mountain of copyright. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Copy copyright protection. And I spelled mountain wrong, so there we go. Now it's perfect. <laughs> Alexander examines the strange etchings in the face of the cliff. All right, the master of language will what? Come on, go figure this out. <laughs> uh, call an Egyptologist. <laughs> Okay, so the correct answer is uh, the double V with the square, the face, the uh, corners with the dots, and the... Um, I think it's the staircase. Nope, it's the, the box in a box with the line. There we go. That was the answer. Come on, Goku. You should know these answers. <laughs> Sorry, gibberish is not a language I'm not very fluent in. Oh, come on, man. Of all the languages you know, you never bother to figure out wingdings. Yeah, it's a bit too obscure for me. Oh, do you remember when uh, people uh, were saying that uh, Microsoft predicted 9-11? And you know how, uh, or the evidence people use to sort of say, oh yeah, th this is totally going to happen? Mm. Uh, if you typed in uh, 9 and 11 in Microsoft Word under wingdings, it would show an airplane in a tower. In that under order. Under wingdings? Yeah, in wingdings. Yeah, you had to type it in wingdings, and uh, if you type in 9 and 11... Sorry, what, what the hell is wing wingdings? Uh, you know how uh, in uh, Microsoft Word you can choose Times New Roman and like all that uh, different fonts? Yes. Okay, wingdings is basically, uh, instead of, like, actual letters, it's just pictures. Mm hmm okay. So, uh, and then someone figured out that if you typed in 9-11 in wingdings, it would give you airplane uh, tower tower. And that's how Microsoft knew that 9-11 was going to happen. Maybe that's what inspired Osama. <laughs> Osama, he just saw, hmm, this gives me ideas. He couldn't figure out wingdings, but that was the one thing he could figure out from it. Um, I also remember uh, there was an episode of The Simpsons where they take a uh, a trip to uh, 
uh, New York City, and they uh, buy a bus pass to go there, and it costs $9.11, and people cited that as the Simpsons knew 9-11 was going to happen. Yeah, and how many Schwarzenegger movies also predicted 9-11? Um, probably all because, of them. Because, <laughs> like... I remember True Lies and True Lies, but in the climax of True Lies, some uh, he just crashes a jet plane into a in, in, into a building, and also I believe that's the I don't know if that is in the movie because I never watched that movie to completion, but it is uh, the the conclusion of the book, The Running Man. Um. That's a Schwarzenegger movie I gotta I gotta watch. Yeah, I think I saw a little bit of it, and basically all I saw of it was he was dressed up in a uh, yellow jumpsuit, and he looked up, and there was a guy on top of a big pile of something, and that's all I remember. Yeah, I recall basically it was like like a game show where they have to survive. <laughs> yeah. It it was basically a uh, battle royale uh, written by Stephen King. In the face of the cliff. Uh -huh. Was that uh, before, after, or in between the cocaine phase? Uh, I'm going to assume during, because um, everyone uh, remembers that very well. Or very fondly, I should say. Most people don't remember his newer stuff very fondly. Feet trembles as more steps emerge from the granite cliff. Ascend. Yep, uh, that was the uh, answer to that puzzle. I was gonna, I was looking at the letter, seeing if you could, if you could type hi ya. <laughs> but you have to spell ascend in the uh, correct order. Although, uh, uh, what would be really funny is if uh, they had like that kind of puzzle where you have to type a different word uh, from. That word, except it was uh, the the quick uh, brown fox uh, jumps over the lazy dog. <laughs> finds himself finally at the top of the cliffs. So he steps the answer is a lot less obvious. Stands. Alexander finds himself in the presence of a Mon of a Mongolian. <laughs> Let me entertain you with a bit of throat singing. <laughs> If you'd only eat Look, if there's one thing I've learned about uh, Genghis Khan is that the Mongolians are based. <laughs> yeah, just now that now just let the authorities learn about that. <laughs> See, the sweet berries will make you float like a. I'm sure Oscar is taking notice. Or no, was it Doug? It was that we, that Doug. We... I won the fucking vote. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yes, I'm sure Doug is taking notice of your opinions on the Mongols and probably their habits. Hey, uh, uh, Wolf Totem uh, was a uh, uh, a good song. Who is this creature? Old woman just disappeared oh yeah, you haven't been noticing the uh, a very uh, important detail of every weird uh, character we've been running into. Look, an intruder. No. Um. Oh, the Romans. Yes. Uh, but no, the uh, the weird detail uh, for a lot of the people that have been asking uh, us to uh, do something fucking weird. Is that each one of them had has had a uh, glowing eye? I only wanted to visit this beautiful island. No visitors have been welcome on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain in years. Not since the Red and White Queens had spies in the guise of friendly visitors. And uh, can you remember who uh, else in this game had a glowing eyes? No. Okay. So I guess it will remain a mystery until the very end. They will determine what will be done with you. I can assure you, it will not be pleasant. Now let us take you to meet Caesar. <laughs> we are on a joyful <laughs> moment. We are about to go conquer the Gauls. Many atrocities to be made. Only the magic to be committed. Thought, my lord. 
I don't know if that's supposed to be Caesar on the left. Uh, he is very uh, unimpressive. It is the sacred I mean, it's more hair than the than than the real Caesar. He has more hair. He doesn't have the uh, the little uh, leaf crown that all the emperors uh, wore. We have just he wasn't an emperor, though. He's uh, his adoptive son and heir, Octavian, became the emperor. The prophecy would have a different fate befall you. Yeah, but he still had the leaf thing. I don't know what it's called. Will defeat the Minotaur. The Minotaur has violated our sacred catacombs and eats our young in sacrifice. The Minotaur has oh, violated the NAB. <laughs> was taken there only this morning. The Minotaur refuses to pay its taxes. We offering. need you to dispose of him. <laughs> A dilemma then. Whom shall I obey in regards to your fate? The Oracle or the Crown? But since Al Hazred did not dictate how I was to dispose of intruders, and since you cannot possibly survive the catacombs, your imprisonment. Yeah, this is a very nice. long winded explanation to just say, hey, uh, we have a Minotaur problem, take care of it. <laughs> I was thinking about the, the video, I. Like... I think I sent you. Ah, yes. Does my lord wish to go to Ireland to commit atrocities? Ah, that video is so good. Very well. You know, with all the atrocities that uh, the Irish suffered from the uh, the English crown, it's a uh, actual wonder that they didn't go with the uh, Mosh proposal. More. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you know what the modest proposal was, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. Who was it? Uh, it was Jonathan Swift. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of the guy, of the author, but uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, uh, I think the earliest example of uh, like satire, uh, in like a, a work of like that. Mm. Well, I'm pretty sure the concept of the the idea of satire has existed before, but yeah. I think there was like a story. I think uh, I think story like Garganto and Pantagruel were kind of like taking a satire. Um, I think it was it was like a first for something, and maybe like political satire, or. But I guess you could also say Dante's Inferno was a, a form of political satire, but I, I don't know. I do remember it was like a first for something. It's over, Pulp. I drew myself as the Chad and you as the Wojak. I drew you uh, burning in a lake of fire for all eternity while I get to laugh at uh, uh, you, it happening to you. Get fucked, nerd. <laughs> Oh, and uh, for those wondering, uh, yes, uh, the pattern that I am walking is very specific. Uh, this is a maze, and if you take the wrong left turn, uh, you die instantly. But we need this specific skull, so once we have that, we are good. I don't know why that skull in particular, considering we're in a crypt where there's uh, presumably dozens, at least, of skulls that we could have taken, but, you know, whatever. And here's another copyright protection thing. Uh, we need to take this uh, specific path. So, feather, 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 sigh, and then crown, uh, arrow, skull, and then we win. If oh. you step on the on the wrong one, does yeah the floor buckles and you die. The shield from the wall. But we got a shield. Uh, we will be needing that. But I'm thinking to bring the one from his home. Yeah, that would be cheating. And there's one more thing that we need. Uh, it's in this room. That skeleton's eyes are glowing, so we steal its coins. On the skeleton's eyes, he takes the old coins. Now he, now he will be stranded in the afterlife. 
hey, we're going to be needing it uh, in a moment, so uh, he can get fucked. <laughs> it's a trap. The doors have sealed Alexander inside. And right as a... And the ceiling is coming down. And I write uh, and when 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 the prince goes goes to sleep, he's, he starts hearing, "Give it back." A brick into the grinding gears. Well, good thing we're going to spend the coins before we go to sleep. So. The brick is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The mechanism grinds to a halt. The ceiling is stuck. The trap anyway, is it's a good thing that brick was powerful enough to uh, uh, stop the gears. So. Huzzah. And then we go up uh, this away. Oh! Sounds a trap floor. Looks like we made a wrong left turn, except this is the wrong left turn that we're supposed to take. For once, Wily Coyote was, went to the right place. <laughs> Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand. And this is why we needed the tinder box, because if we didn't have it, um, I think we uh, would be it would be a uh, game over at this point. Alexander so, takes the here we go. From his tinder box and uses the flint in the box to light it. I do like the uh, uh, the effect that they did for when uh, the tinder box is lit, though. It's quite nice. Alexander lights the extinguished torch. And puts his tinderbox away. It's always torches. Yeah, I mean, they burn forever, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, in Kingdom Come Deliverance, they, it kind of does feel like they burn forever. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few torches, and I don't recall... I don't recall ever using, like, one torch to completion in that game. To be fair, I don't go out at night that much. Very much in that game, but... Well, yeah, because that's when the werewolves come out. No, that's in Blood Moon. <laughs> Alexander hears the but anyway, we do need to get into this room. So loud that the creature itself and hopefully you picked up that hole in the wall. The noises are coming from the other side of the east wall. Alexander puts Is that a rubber rat? On the east no, it's a hole in the wall. The hole in the no, wall the thing you just grabbed there. Yeah, it's a hole in the wall. Stones. No, the thing. Yeah, the thing on the wall. It is a hole in the wall. That is what it's called. Oh God. <laughs> we really are going by Wily e. Coyote logic. See, that's what it looks like. <laughs> a weird googly fucking thing. Uh, looks like the Minotaur is keeping leg day, by the way. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Park Cow, they're already pretty muscly. I mean, his ones, his ones look like the the, the, the legs of a calf. Alexander contemplates what he's just seen. Yeah, I see the joke that you did there. By the Minotaur, makes a run for it. Not a joke, like it's what it looks like. Creature finds its way home. Like him, I'm just saying, Minotaur, it doesn't look like he has very strong legs. Oh. I thought you said he uh, did do leg day. Okay, uh, I misheard it. And when you said calf, I was like, oh, that's a good play on words for someone who doesn't speak English as their native language. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure Gok is uh, now uh, furiously uh, screaming about uh, 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 me uh, making a pun on his pun. <laughs> Not furiously screaming. I'm just <laughs> disappointed. Hey man, and we've also already, clean uh, your ears. Look, clean your ears, okay? Look, we've already been over this like a half hour ago. Like uh, you should be questioning our, our friendship at all times. <laughs> now let's see. I don't feel they're anything. gonna be like a, uh, he's gonna draw a door a in the wall. No, that's later, Goke. Come on. A secret door rolls open. I will never put it past this game. He just draws like a. Like... <laughs> Your struggles are useless. The funny part is, is that uh, uh, Goke has to figure out if I'm uh, fucking with him or not. <laughs> 
I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't put it past this game to just have a wily, have a wily coyote moment where he draws like a, but before he can uh, a road or a door in the wall and it works. <laughs> Did you bring a weapon? No. <laughs> no, we brought a scarf. That's all we need. <laughs> He's gonna flicker. He's gonna flicker the Minotaur in the balls. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna rat tail him. Never, you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, He's talking like the Witch King of Angmar. <laughs> um, it's always funny to me how slow the Witch King speaks. <laughs> Uh, the no, Witch King uh, from no, Lord of the Rings, you said, or yes. uh... yeah, the Lord of the Rings. Okay, because that's yeah, the only Witch King that I know. He speaks so slowly. Well, yeah, because he's like, dead. He's... That that one makes sense, but uh, the Minotaur, no. I don't think he's exactly dead. He's like a creature that was corrupt, like a person that was corrupted by the ring. Yeah, he's a wraith. That means he's dead. <laughs> The Minotaur drops but anyway, good thing there's a big pit of fire right there. Flames. Slowly, yeah, it's convenient. Fades as well. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you all right? No, I am not all right. I assume you. I am tied up, you moron. <laughs> uh, of course not. Sorry. Let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. It's like, no, it's gonna take too long. Pull out the dagger uh, that I have. It should be enough to cut the rope. And for some reason, you can't use the dagger for this. Right, I, I've got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. Yeah, it's a shame that we couldn't use the dagger to uh, uh, attack the uh, the bull, or she couldn't have used it to attack it. But you know, whatever. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? The winged one's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled Ooh, by the crow. sound of rock what a pretty bird. against rock. Lady Celeste, why hmm, strange. You... The crow also has glowing eyes. The bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior Did you at least see that, Gok? <laughs> no, I'm trying currently trying to change my avatar. Oh, okay. And uh, I noticed the prince was being an ungrateful prat. I see well, yeah. You've proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for. But now we have important side. lore dumps. So I thank you. I am obliged. The hero to of the, the prophecy. Of we got Todd Howard to write the to write this passage. We have already begun the process of clearing. No, Todd Howard wishes he could uh, write a passage this good. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle. So this um, if I really think Todd Howard ever writes anything, he's too busy cutting mechanics. Nah, no, he, he uh, left it to the uh, the guy who said that uh, uh, the main character from Fallout 4 is a war criminal. And if Princess Cosima trusts him, to be fair, I kind of like that uh, uh, that take. My guards will take you to the Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, my character does commit war crimes. How could you tell? <laughs> I don't know what's funnier. The fact that he said that with a straight face, not knowing uh, anything about uh, the the intro cinematic to follow one. Or the fact that... Uh, never played the game. Yeah, basically showing that, yeah, he's never played the fucking game and he's an idiot. Or two, the fact that uh, the... Uh, fans of the Fallout series said, no, uh, there is no way that the uh, main protagonist of Fallout 4 could have been the uh, guy in uh, uh, Canada committing the war crime because, uh, uh, according to the uh, files found in the game of Fallout 4, it says that the main character was uh, trained in power armor but never actually saw uh, combat on the field. Princess Cosima. Whatever you so, can tell me, that's the level of ineptitude that Bethesda is at. Of course, the princess. Goodness. So, the guy committing war crimes is in Canada. Yeah. 
uh, that's uh, what uh, the uh, intro cinematic said, that the uh, the boys were keeping the peace in newly annexed Canada, and the, fir the thing that they showed was him uh, doing the uh, 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 pistol uh, shooting a, a guy in the back of the head uh, who was tied up. <laughs> no. How do I redeem her? Uh, I like the cut of a blade so yet. so Fallout One takes place in a reality where um, where the United States finally got sick of your crap <laughs> and decided to annex your country for good. Well, if you want to know the full lore of Fallout One, basically what happened was that uh, the Chinese invaded Alaska for uh, nuclear resources, and because Alaska is kind of cut off from the rest of the United States due to uh, Canada being in the way. Uh, the United States just annexed Canada to make it more simple. Who must I fight? <laughs> they asked passages. They asked can the Canadians to collaborate, help them pass through, and the Canadians, no, China is our friend. <laughs> yeah, somehow Trudeau is still prime minister in '77. <laughs> yeah, he he basically threw, uh, can uh, Trudeau sensing the the the. the the, the, the result of the next election takes over as a dictator and skipping himself alive with the blood of the, of the, of the innocent, the children, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the blood of the innocent sacrificed to, to, to his throne. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Uh, it wouldn't put me past it. It wouldn't put, I wouldn't put it past him, sorry, that, uh, some of those things were on the to-do list. <laughs> well, I wouldn't piss, I wouldn't put it past him to already be drinking the blood of the innocent. Could help you destroy the dark force. Anyway, uh, back to the game. Uh, this is uh, the essentially the big dividing line between the endings that you can possibly get. So we can seek out the help from the druids uh, and. Uh, seek passage uh, to the afterlife to uh, uh, gain help to uh, taking down. Uh, uh, oh shoot! I forgot the uh, the vizier's name. Al Hazred. That's that's what it was. Uh, the name is is no good. Basically. Uh, or we can figure out our own way in. Figuring out our own way in is kind of poopy, and I don't like it. So. Have you ever seen that an, that that cartoon? Uh, what cartoon? Is no good. Mm. It aired a long, long time ago in the nineties. Um, it was it, is no good. Based. I've never heard of it, so maybe it was only a American, or maybe only down wherever the fuck you live. Uh, I'm too lazy to figure out off the top of my head at the moment. So that's how much Nicaragua means to you? Yeah, basically. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there is, uh, there is this cartoon called Is No Good. It's based on a French, uh, French comic book. Arrives at the top of the uh, somewhere oh, that, that makes it's it even more surprising that I haven't heard of it, because apparently, uh, uh, French Canada and, uh, France French, uh, uh, work together a lot to make a lot of our Canadian cartoons. Alexander finds himself in a dark cave. Yeah, there, uh, there is this character. It's called. Uh, yeah, his name is no good. He's a. Alexander he's a vizier who wants to be to be sultan. Be sultan. Mm -hmm. As and a, the, the, as they all do. Yeah, and uh, the the whole premise of the story was like him just uh, all the plots he makes to just makes him to just make uh, make himself sultan. <laughs> and in this part of the cave is better. There is a there was an episode I recall there was an episode of the cartoon where he meets a, like a traveler who sells a magic cup, and if two people drink from the magic cup in succession, they switch bodies. <laughs> A strong smell of peppermint. Is okay, so we're uh, introducing Freaky Friday into this. Very good. Basically. So, and he's, he, man he does manage to switch bodies with the Sultan. But he's such a, but he's such a, 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 a terrible ruler that the people 
and then he sends the Sultan in his body Alexander to prison. Kings. But like, he's a garbage ruler, so people just, so people just, just depose him, Alexander take Kings. him, take his body, uh, uh, take the Sultan in his body out of jail and instate him in back in power. <laughs> <laughs> He was so bad that everyone just immediately uh, realized, hey, wait a minute, you're not the emperor, you're just the vizier. The vizier must be the uh, real emperor. No, they just thought, ah, let's, let's put his no good in power. <laughs> he's, but, he's gonna do much better, and he just brings it. They just put the sultan back in power. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ow! Hey! It is, uh... Alexander pulls out his magic map. I don't recall that 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 airing for long so i'm gonna gather that Alexander it wasn't a cartoon a that was particularly popular yeah but uh now that we've done all that a new island has appeared this is the land of the druids or basically the island of mists so and there's spooky noises to the north so we shall go here and we shall take a lump of coal. Kleptomania runs in the family. Well, yeah. But even worse still, we're going to take this uh, scythe that's up here. That clearly very obviously belongs to somebody, but yeah, fuck them. They're druids. Uh, they're sitting around, uh, enjoying nature, uh, harvesting uh, mistletoe. Alexander. Drinking ayahuasca. <laughs> Alexander feels a strange. All right, so to the Isle of Beasts, then we can finally see what's uh, behind the uh, garden wall. But uh, it's been a while, so let's make a save just in case. There we go. Owl of Beasts. <laughs> Is there uh, actually a legitimate difference between uh, using Isle like as in I-S-L-E versus Island? Like, is just Isle just a short form of it, or is it like uh, more of a specific thing, like you use Isle if it's like a really small island? I have no clue. Okay. Alexander takes a Anyway, let's uh, nick a uh, white rose here. It's very beautiful. Alexander walks and paint her red. No, it's a white rose. But the rose and paint her red. No, 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 no. What are you missing? A red rose. We're not on the Isle of Wonder. We're on the Isle of Beasts. We're not painting the roses uh, red. Okay, you don't want to scare the bulls on this one. Determined to get well, yeah, we're not running into a bull. What do you think this is? The Isle of Beasts. Yeah, the Isle of Beasts, and we've already ran into a a bull that we used something red on. It'd be it'd well, be you're silly. Saying that, you're saying that can only be one bull in uh, for a game? Yes. He's through. In fact, of all in all existence, there can only be one bull ever. So here we are. We have like a a. My name is Alexander. A boar, I guess. I didn't mean to disturb your private garden. But no. it's missing its piggy nose. That's like the best part of a boar. He reminds me of the tro of the like the, the orcs from from Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Um, I, I suppose it is um, my nature to break. I don't. Did we get far into it? Because I think we saw two or three episodes before I was like, no, this is pretty poopy. <laughs> like, let's stop. <laughs> I think we saw about two. Okay. Because I don't remember yeah. orcs in the first two episodes. I remember Tiamat a fucking lot. <laughs> it is yeah. Really well, Tiamat is only in the first episode. I think in the second episode is the Eye I I of the Beholder. Um, I think the second episode was the... Did they fight a Beholder? Because I know all I remember from that one was that there was the, uh, the knight who was scared of his own shadow. And took credit for winning things. Mm -hmm. 
warped in shape and trapped on this enchanted Yeah, that's the that's the same episode. Oh, okay. Surely there is a way off this island. Oh, surely. You I like how you actually remember the title of that episode too. <laughs> where would I go clad so eloquently as I am with this silk and this pelt? You see my prison. That's not how you use the word eloquent. You are the first to break through the barriers in low these Uh how did he use it because it's muted for me? For the druids who stole yeah, he's he's using the word eloquent to describe his clothing like no that that's not what it means. I'm afraid you don't understand. Yeah, you can say eloquent clothes. Were a warning and protection for you more than for me. Your prize for forcing like, what are you talking about? Like, how, how, how is that wrong? By the laws of this sorcery, because eloquent is an adjective that has to do with loquation, speech, the, the manner of speech. An eloquent person, a one who has a way with words. Not one who is dressed well, that would be elegant. There must be some way to break the enchantment. Spells always have a weakness well, somewhere. The I guess the whole of uh, uh, English uh, people have been saying it wrong then. Oh my lord. What is wrong with the Anglophonic war? Um, uh, what is wrong with you? No, actually, answer me this. What is wrong with you? Who, me, <laughs> okay. specifically? A lot of things. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, you... Open a dictionary, man! Come on! No, it's too Let's hard. It's like on the other side of the room, and then I have to actually re remember how it's spelt, and I'm bad at spelling. I'm questioning how you're gonna understand Japanese when you can barely speak English. Well, yeah, Japanese is a hell of a lot easier to understand. <laughs> I mean, uh, if it's written in Romanji, like, it's like the easiest thing to uh, pronounce. It sure is! You have found a maid. Which is why it's baffling how uh, uh, people uh, look at a, uh, a a word that's written in Romanji or uh, uh, written in uh, Roman uh, italics, and they're like, "Oh my God, I can't pronounce this." It says like "ichijuku," uh, and they like uh, fumble over themselves uh, trying to pronounce it, and it's like it just says "ichi." Like, God damn it! <laughs> yeah. I uh, the Anglophonics refusal to understand like, how simple the pronunciation of Japanese is is one of the most like it, it sometimes makes me wish I could resort to violence because Alexander. just just I'm just screaming to myself sometimes just read it phonetically you bastard like you honestly disgusting... the the only curveball with uh, East Asian languages, if it's written in uh, Rom Roman italics, is that um, if you see an X, it's pronounced as a Z. And that's not that too far off of the mark for English either. I do recall, like, I was watching a video recently because about Morrowind. There is a, there is a character in Morrowind that's uh, it's called Caius Cosadis. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's one of the it's one of the main characters you meet in the, within the in the main in the main quest. Like he's he's your main quest giver for majority of the game. But the I was watching this video and the guy sometime and some, somehow he read the name Caius Cosades. Or, well, if you're actually gonna like the the the, the Imperials are supposed kind of like inspired by the Romans, so. They're based on the Romans, so it would probably be better to read like as Cosadis. But either way, he manages to read to 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 read his name, and some t somehow logic that the pronunciation is Keys Cosades. What an adventure! Keys. Yeah, he was uh, fumbling around in his pockets for them. I was really thinking to myself, dude. Did your mother beat you beat you too much or not enough you that you managed to read the, well, the name Caius and some, and pronounce it Keys? Yeah. Yeah, um, like English pronunciation is retarded and the people who speak it are retarded as a consequence. I am, I the language was a mistake. You see, my 
Mother died and my father well, married. we're stuck with it because uh, England was the last uh, country to take over most of the world, so get fucked. I only try to repay her for my upkeep as best I can. I see. Um. Oh, by the way, um, if we were talking over it, uh, we are on a time limit uh, for uh, trying to get this woman to marry uh, Beast. So... If we take too long, then uh, it's game over. There's a path running through. Get her to stop being a prick. The path crosses. No, she's not a prick. She's just a uh, very shy. Visitors away. At the center lives a tremendous beast. Really? Oh, so we're trying to marry her with a like a not pig man? No, we are marrying her to the pig man. Yes. Uh, not quite pig man. It speaks with the like he's missing a nose, dude, as you said. Yeah. Well, he he does have a nose. It's just way up on his face, like uh, more closer to where it would be if uh, he was like human. Even though he has a big long snout. Maybe he's more like a like. I don't know what. Set him on the island. I think there's probably I forgot the name of the of the animal. A tapir. Perhaps. No, that doesn't make sense because no. tapirs uh, also no, have it uh, at the bottom. Have, tapirs have like a bit of a, a bit of a snout. He is indeed ferocious, uh, but well, no, they have a like a really a pig a pig nose, but it's just bent oh, down like a snout, uh, like an elephant. Yes, I, could, I think they are the same class, the same, such a beast the same group as the elephants. I like the prosbocides. I think it's Look, all I know is that whales are related to hippos. <laughs> yeah, they're both mammals, so. No, like they're direct, uh, uh, like they're cousins in the same way that humans are cousins to Neanderthals. I could take you there. In fact, I would owe you my life if you would. There's a lot of weird animals that are related to each other, like. Um, Giraffes are related to the okapi. I have no clue what is an okapi. Uh, basically, it looks like a, a cross between a zebra and a deer without antlers. It's very weird. Home is a hard place to leave, even if you're unhappy there. But I will go. If I can help him, I must go. I'm just looking at pictures of Okapis. Eh, they look for... I can I can see the similarities. Yeah, like, there's similarities, but it, at the same time, it's like... How is that related to a giraffe? <laughs> like, it's nowhere near as tall. Why, it's the most beautiful thing Prepare what is. Um... Godzilla. <laughs> no, Godzilla is a lot taller, you dumbass. To a place where roses grow and a everybody knows that the world's tallest giraffe it, it, uh never mind i, see you I fucked yeah, up the joke uh, yeah i i feel i feel like that that joke would be embarrassing yeah probably better not telling it yes my lord i do oh i remember what how the joke went it was uh the world's tallest giraffe is taller than all other giraffes in the world <laughs> oh but it is a gentle face and that's kind. awful you look at me so sweetly and are not repulsed. Oh. Yeah, so is like, gonna turn, is he gonna turn into a prince, or she's gonna morph? Or, uh, she's gonna completely assume the role of a white woman. Both. <laughs> I am not marrying the furry. Oh joy! Not such nonsense, beauty. Do you think that I learned nothing of true love during my time here? You are my queen. See? I live in a fancy castle, oh, my good, my dear. Down. See, I told you they God, both her transform. Mouth her mouth looks so weird in those in, when, when the character speaks. Like, how can I ever repay? Yeah, I think it's one of those things where uh, they basically drew everything except for like where the mouth should be, and then uh, animated just that portion. You know, similar to how a lot of um, uh, anime uh, sort of gets around uh, uh, animation. Uh, uh, nuances by just only animating the mouth and keeping everything else still. I recall there was a, a, a this 
an episode of the Looney Tunes, like a bug, I think it was Bugs Bunny, episode of the Bugs Bunny is like inv Invasion of the of the Bunny Snatchers, mm -hmm. where they have like a, like a, what's, the, what's his name is, um, the, the, the duck. Thank you. Daffy his Duck? Name on, yeah, Daffy Duck. Come, beauty. It's like a, the, 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 a, a Daffy Duck impersonator, and it's like a crude, a crude representation representation of Daffy Duck, and oh. like with a human mouth speaking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Human I, mouth imposed on the on the on the drawing. Yeah, I remember that. Um, that was a. Uh, His old clothes are very ragged and heavy. Uh, I actually remember that. Uh, I can't remember if it was a movie or uh, just a short or whatever, but yeah, they uh, were trying to get everybody to eat weird carrots, and that's how they uh, would transform. Through beauty's clothes, but, finds nothing. but anyway, uh, one of the things that we need is... Well, okay, we get the uh, sacred water and we dump it into our uh, makeshift uh, uh, teapot. And then the last ingredient we need is falling water. So we take it and we use it on the fountain here. Alexander fills the hunter's lamp to the brim with the fountain water. And huzzah, we have everything we need to create a uh, a, a storm po uh, spell. So let's see, magic paint, make rain spell. To enchant the hunter's lamp with the make rain spell. And thankfully, uh, casting spells in King's Quest Six is nowhere near as horrible as it is in Three. Come and sup with me no risk of explosions this time. No risk of explosion. Well, maybe a little bit, but uh, it's a lot more straightforward and simple. It's also funny that the only uh, 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 King's Quest character that you play as that actually casts spells is Alexander. Oh, his father did in the, in the previous game. Um, well, that was right more like uh, he just uh, picked up a wand and just memorized four things and that was it. Like, uh, Alexander actually puts in the, the elbow uh, grease to actually cast spells. <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah, but he was still cat. Yeah, well, King Graham first... was just lucky that those were the exact four things that he needed to know to uh, defeat the wizard. Alexander feels it. Anyway, back to the Isle of Mists. The oh, shit, we're busted. Great gods. Did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. Perhaps he was sent by the spirit. I think I those mushrooms are pretty strong this he time. Intruder, no <laughs> matter how he got here, grab him. Not again. Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. You, sh go. you should consider not being so much of a pussy. <laughs> oh, that and walk animation. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you see it, Goke? Gathered around a bonfire. Yes. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. They do the place. South Park walk. As to its purpose, yeah. Alexander has no clue. We found a treasure. Oh, uh, this arch druid. When his portrait comes up, look at his hat. Arch druid. And keep track of now when he blinks. Alexander wandered into. This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during the see it? <laughs> the hat is controlling him. Burn it. I must rescue the princess. There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed in that, the that, that makes no sense, you retard you retard you senile fool. No, it makes sense. It, it, before you help others, you have to help yourself. And the cage is swung. Out. Yeah, it just so uh, happens that, uh, uh, in order to help himself, uh, it's a situation that they're causing. So <laughs> Alexander starts to feel a little warm. But um, yeah, it's time. It's time to start considering war. Maybe invade the island and the just cage is wipe hot. out the druids. Fire in the cage. 
Look. I mean, so far they have not proven themselves to be very reasonable people. Clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. Don't worry, we shall uh, flame is uh, create a uh, spell that they can't ignore. The cage from igniting for long. More specifically, it was the uh, the make rain spell. Uh, the last thing that we needed to do was to boil the pot. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. I did not think things yeah. through. It just happens to be con to conveniently work. Yeah, and even the game mentioned it was convenient that the uh, the uh, the lamp that we found uh, happened to be uh, uh, the double as a, a teapot. It's just convenient that, that... It starts to rain. It's just convenient that the stuff I start, I, I mix at random works out in spells that save my ass. Okay, to be fair, we did get a spell book that told us that mixing up these random ingredients would work. <laughs> it's not like in King's Quest 3 where you needed the manual. That was spelt wrong. Old man, I am I am going to bring my army here and I will have you hanged. <laughs> stole our sacred miniature oak tree. Besides, Wazir Al-Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly... Oh, there was a YouTube video that was discussing, uh, like, the entire history that we know of uh, when it comes to the Druids, and it was actually uh, quite interesting. Um... A lot of, since uh, the Druids never actually wrote anything down, a lot, pretty much all of it was based on uh, accounts of uh, the Romans uh, uh, running into them. So, there was a lot of bias there, basically saying, of the Romans putting in, like, every other sentence that these Druids are fucking weirdos. <laughs> so. Bunch of mushrooms. The souls might be able to help me on they smoke the story. mushrooms that grow in cow dung. No, I don't think they were uh, Indian. And yet getting yourself killed will hardly help the princess. But I will tell you what I know. Easy. Legend has it that it is... He says right after putting him up to cook over fire. ...of the dead. In order to save yeah, apparently, uh, human sacrifices by, uh, torching and wicker men was a thing by the Druids, but, uh, what the Romans did not realize or, uh, didn't write down was that the only times that the Druids actually did that was, uh, in desperate measures or prisoners, like, uh, who, and specifically, like, prisoners who did heinous crimes. So, I guess, uh, teleporting to an island is a heinous crime to these people. Nightmare sometimes flies to the I do a... world to feed yeah. on There are instances of human sacrifices done by the Romans, too. They did sacrifice prisoners during the triumphs. Yeah, I mean, throughout every, uh, society and, uh, throughout history, there's always been human sacrifices. That's, it's nothing new. I'm not going to say, uh, saying every is very disingenuous, but it was a very much of a thing. It's, it's more common, common like in pre-Christian societies of your, uh, at least like, uh, in Europe at least, it's more common in pre-Christian societies. How do you explain the Mayans and the Aztecs then? <laughs> that was, uh, after, uh, Christianity. Yeah, like I said, in Europe. But he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless. Robbed of sleep, robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. It is said that he hates all mortals. He's an incel. For the mortality <laughs> that he lost. Yep, the you made him and he says, give wife. Interesting. Yep, Bring uh, me a wife. I remember. And I... <laughs> Yep, he only, uh, he was about to, uh, get laid by the one woman who, uh, didn't reject him, and, uh, death took her, and he decided to challenge death for her back. <laughs> but he never returned.
May it indeed. Thank you, Archdruid. But there is one important ingredient that we need here. Uh, we have to take the skull and scoop up some of these Alexander hot oaks. Scoops up some of the red hot embers in the ancient human skull. And we have ourselves another uh, piece of a uh, spell. Alexander. The jack o' lantern. Alexander. Well, jack o' lantern implies pumpkin, but all right. <laughs> but with that. Uh, that'll be it for this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Have a nice night.